Over the last decade, certain communities have been increasingly impacted by rising sea levels and extreme weather events. In order to respond and plan effectively to changing climate conditions, some states and local governments are adopting climate prediction models using AI and analytics tools to better understand the changes affecting their communities. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and joining us to talk about that today are Ed Sniffen, Director for the Department of Transportation for the State of Hawaii, and Daniel Liu, Enterprise Architect at Google. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. And Ed, I'd like to start with you. Protecting communities and preserving infrastructure and ensuring access to resources is increasingly important to your mission. Can you describe the Climate Action Plan and how it will build resilient strategies for communities you serve. Yeah, in the past, when we started working on our climate, climate adaptation action plans, they were specific to DOT, specific to the things that the DOTs thought were important. We wanted to ensure that when we work towards a plan that works for our communities, we looked at all the things that are important to the state. We wanted to make sure we had a tool that would allow us to layer on the information of all those pieces that are important to ensure that we make the best decisions with our resources daily. And this is what the, the Google tools do for us. It allows us to consider all the things that affect our system and all the things that our system affects, like land use, like equity, um, like the condition of the system itself, to ensure that when we work towards our operations and maintenance plans, our capital improvement plans, and definitely our climate ad adaptation action plans, we are affecting things that will benefit the communities, given um, what we know is coming in the future. Uh, so, Daniel, how is Google working uh, with its state and local customers to integrate AI into their mission strategies and, and gain better insights from their data? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we want to make sure that you know, we align with the state's missions. Google has a mission statement called Organize World's Information and Made Usable and Accessible to Everyone on the Planet. And we want to bring the same thing to the states. I think using AI, we starting with, when we talk about AI, the first thing is we need all the data. So what we're trying to do is establish what I call a data hub, but this is very specific for the state for DOT. So I call this as a transportation data hub. We want to collect all the data sets into this a single unified platforms. And collectively, I think we have about 120 data sets that we collect from the states. And we also provide quite a bit of the Google's data sets, such as Google Earth Engine data, map data, Waze data. And we also have quite a bit of what we'll call a public data sets from Google, which included things Ed was talking about, like the, the equity data, the health data, because in order to collaborate all those data sets to make sense, we need all those data to put together. And then with all the data sets in one single platform, this is where we can start using the AI capabilities to analyze all those data. And then on top of that, we want to make sure that we have that communications, not only to the public, but also to internal DOT folks to have the ability to use this data for AI predictions. So Ed, can you talk about how your department is using artificial intelligence and data analytics tools to build better climate prediction models? Absolutely. Uh, all of the DOTs, Hawaii included, have tons of data sets that we have at our at our reach, uh, especially when we work with our, our consultants like um, like Google, who have even more. There's data upon data that we can consider on making the best decisions to move forward with the resources that we have. We use this platform to ensure that we consider all those those pieces that are important to us. Again, um, the DOT is here to ensure that we connect people to the good services and opportunities they, they have, both locally and internationally. We want to make sure that we also consider those big things that the state looks at. We have 2030 clean energy goals that we must hit. So energy, clean energy is a big thing for us. We have food security and the energy security issues that we need to address in Hawaii. And the, the DOT has the best opportunity, the best resourcing in order to move forward on that. Uh, we make sure that we're getting involved in housing issues to ensure that we put, provide more housing for our communities here. We have that ability to ensure that we can incentivize developments in different areas uh, for, for our, our communities, making sure that we put people closer to the good services and opportunities that they need. We cannot do that without a, without a, a robust uh, AI engine that 
takes the data for us and, and is our first piece of filter. We want to make sure that it pulls in all those data pieces that we have internally that Google provides for us, um, both from their, their own resources and from other states, to ensure we make the best decisions we can with the resources that we have. All the DLTs are resource limited, uh, from people to funding. We want to make sure that every time we make a decision, we affect as many of those high-level priorities of the state as possible. And that's what the engine help, helps us do. What key challenges uh, is your department facing uh, as you work to uh, integrate clean data into your models? I think the biggest challenge that all DOTs have, and especially Hawaii DOT, is, is resourcing people. Uh, we have 20% um, to 25% vacancy, and we see this across the nation in all DOTs and in all engineering disciplines that support the DOTs. Given that, we got to make sure that that the lower level thought processes are taken out of the, the equation. Our people can focus on the higher level pieces because our tools allow us to filter out the data that we need um, to ensure we make the best decision possible. This is why we look for really good partners in industry to help us with platforms that allow us to make the best decisions going forward as efficiently as possible. Obviously, generative AI capabilities continue to improve rapidly, uh, let alone year over year. Uh, in what ways are you seeing generative AI helping to support progress in resilience strategies? I think one of the key things is really using the generative AI to predict extreme weather events. Um, I think we have many use cases as we start a project maybe a year and a half ago. Um, we're concerned about the lava flow impacts. We're concerned about landslides. One of the top thing is to look at sea level rise. 20% of the road is surrounded by the coastline and sea level rise cause road erosions has a huge impact on infrastructures and the way how people live on the island. So that becomes something that's really big. So how do you use AI to predict looking at sea level rise, how the geological sea coastline is changing over time? I think just early last year, we have an incident that one of the house in the North Shore on Wahoo was washed away early in the morning. Luckily, the person was okay, but his house is gone. But how can we predict those kind of things ahead of time, understanding that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we should be able to predict how things change and how things can really impact the way how people live in this area. One thing as we're starting this project, a year and a half ago, yes, sea level rise is a top concern. But no, no, there's a list of the things we're looking at, including Wi-Fi. Uh, but nobody thought about this is like on the top of the list. But the reason the Maui Five kind of just proved that, you know, the leadership from the states really have this vision to want to prevent all those things happens, like things like Maui. But those things happen. So how can we use the AI technology to really help to predict those things ahead of time for disaster recovery and how can we help after post disasters to really assist the residents in the area to using gen AI technology to have getting all the resources that's available to help the resident on this in the states thank you for sharing that uh, and so what are some key lessons learned that you can offer your peers at state agencies who you know are looking to adopt their own predictive models in, in light of just how many data sets are out there now I think the biggest thing that all states can consider is um, ensuring that your plan is not just a written document that sits to be updated in the future. Uh, for With IIJA, uh, there is a strong recommendation for all states to adopt a RIP, a Resilience Improvement Plan. Instead of drafting a plan um, that we could that we could rip, um, you know, write and read and, and the like and leave on our desks, we use this platform, Google's platform, as our RIP, because it's a living document. Every time new information comes in, it should be updated. Every time new priorities come in, it should be updated. And it shouldn't wait for it to come off the printer in order for its update. So this is real-time information coming in to real-time adjust the plan according to the priorities of the state, according to the new information that comes in, and according to the new priorities that we see coming through. In the past, when we did our uh, climate adaptation action plan, we considered eight impacts to the system. Um, the biggest issues that we saw from an emergency perspective in the past was always um, ocean surge. 
we saw fatalities occurring near the ocean when we had larger surfs or we had big storms coming in and the like. Um, Maui showed a huge different concern now. So wildfire went from seventh on the list up to near the top. And then we ensured that we adjusted our system based on that. And this, our generative AI system allowed us to consider what all, what different models we should look at from our maintenance of operations to our CIP to ensure that we look at different access points out of communities to ensure that people don't feel like they're, um, they're stuck in the areas that they live, given the new impacts that, that, that we're going to have to live with going forward. So the, the biggest thing for all states, um, consider your plans fluid, consider them living documents and look at opportunities to use technology that allows you to adjust your priorities and adjust your thought processes very quickly with the new information that, that's available to you. And Daniel, um, let me pose that same question to you. What are some recommendations that you would provide state and local leaders to you know, integrate generative AI capabilities into their mission operations, and particularly since you know, those capabilities are evolving so quickly? Yeah, I think Gen AI is still relatively new things. So for state leaderships, I think one of the key things here is how to identify some clear use cases. I know government are very busy. We have very different kind of priorities. And to define clear use cases or top use cases, that becomes very important. Things like predicting extreme weathers, uh, maybe optimize renewable energy integrations, or maybe develop a more of a sustaining agriculture practice. Those are the important part. And the second thing is really to establish a what I call a data-driven culture. Uh, what I mean by this way is, I think Ed talked about earlier that we want to establish not just some two sets, but we want to establish a platform. The data we collect for AI use needs to be not doing this over and over again. I'm doing this for the Department of Agriculture, I'm doing this for the Department of uh, Transportation, but the platform we are doing is a uniform platform that we collect the data that can be reusable for all the state departments. So that's another lesson we learned from this here. I really align with Ed's vision over here. And the lastly is really how do you take advantage and leverage the Google's AI cultures? I think there's quite a bit of a learning curve there too, to really do quite a bit of the educations for the state leaderships to understand how Gen AI can work with the states to getting the latest AI technology to be useful for those use cases and to form that strong partnerships with the large ecosystem with Google partnerships to really help the state to putting those AI use case to serve what's the citizen. Well, uh, Ed Sniffen and Daniel Liu, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your uh, respective insights on how AI and analytic tools can help states and local um, agencies really better prepare for the future uh, in protecting their community. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.